All right, let's make Polish papal cream cake in honor of St. Pope John Paul II. This was his favorite. I'm gonna use frozen puff pastry sheets because I'm not trying to be an overachiever today. I don't know why I thought these were gonna be hard to work with, they're not. Um, it was frozen, I put it in the refrigerator overnight to thaw it and I worked with it while it was still cold and it was super easy to unfold. Now, you don't want these to rise too much, and I heard a lot of horror stories on the internet about people having them rise even as much as four inches when you bake them. So supposedly, if you take a fork and prick all these holes on them and then put a cooling rack over the top of it while it bakes, it keeps it from like really excessively rising. I was gonna record myself cracking an egg and didn't realize that my husband had hard boiled some eggs, so here's the second try on that one. This is how I learned how to separate the white from the yellow when I was in college and I was doing egg temper paintings and it's just how I like to do it. And don't come at me for not saving my egg whites. All right, you need six of these egg yolks and we're gonna beat them. I beat mine for about one minute, which seemed to be good. Now I just wanted to take a quick peek at our puff pastry, which looks like it's not rising too much, so that's exciting. Now we're gonna mix the milk, sugar, cornstarch, the pinch of salt, our egg yolks and the vanilla all in our medium saucepan. Now the texture on this is a little bit weird because of the cornstarch that's in it. So you can see my whisk kind of like sticking in the bottom of the pan. You see that cornstarch? But it's okay, in the end it whisked all together just fine. Now before you actually start cooking it, you need to make yourself a large bowl of ice water off to the side so you have that ready. And we're gonna put this over medium heat and we're gonna whisk it and whisk it until it boils. Now you really do have to whisk this continuously to make sure that it doesn't turn into scrambled eggs and that it doesn't get any lumps in it. My whisk was getting a little bit hot, so I put on an oven mitt and I was able to keep whisking it the entire time. Now, as I was whisking, all of a sudden, I could just feel the texture change. So you can see here that it's getting thick and it happens very rapidly. Look how fast that's changing texture. This is the point where you want to keep boiling this for exactly one more minute and you need to keep whisking the whole time and make sure that you get into the corners of your pot with the whisk. Once we have boiled that for one additional minute, we're gonna plunge the bottom of the pot into ice water and continue whisking. Mine came out really good. It didn't have any lumps. You can see the final consistency here. And you can see the puff pastry didn't rise too much, so I now have two sheets of that. I decided to cut off one third of each of my sheets to make like the filling thicker in mine, but it actually turned out to be plenty of filling, so you could totally use the entire sheet of puff pastry. Now, you want to put this on here while it is still warm. You do not want to chill this because once it chills, it kind of sets firmly. Um, almost like it, it seems gelatinous, so you need to spread this on here while it's still warm. I used a spatula to try to get mine up into the corners and just all over this bottom pastry. Then you're gonna have your second sheet of puff pastry that you're gonna bring and put on the top. You can see this stuff is kind of springy. See how it kind of sticks on there? It's looking beautiful already. I'm so excited and now it's gonna go into the refrigerator until it sets up, which only took a few hours. Here's the final result, and it's now ready to be sprinkled with powdered sugar. Wait till you see the results of this. It literally came out so cute. You can just put your powdered sugar in a sifter and shake it over the cake, just like you see me doing here. Now the French version of this dessert has like a white icing drizzled on top, but this Polish version has powdered sugar sprinkled on the top. You guys, I was not expecting the powdered sugar to be so beautiful on this cake, but look at this texture. Also, you don't see the holes that you pricked with the fork at all, so feel free to not bother trying to make those in straight lines like I did. So I was actually a little nervous to slice this because of the texture differences between the flaky puff pastry and the like gelatinous custard inside. Um, but you use a serrated knife, it cut beautifully. I just didn't get through the bottom layer that first time, so I had to go back and push through the bottom layer. And no problems, it sliced beautifully. These little printable Vatican flags are in your file and they can be taped onto a toothpick and stuck into the cake. So you can serve each square with a little Vatican flag and this table display, of which I love having table displays for my liturgical recipes. If you're a recipe card person, be sure to check out your new liturgical season recipe card dividers. And if you keep your recipes in a binder, it can go straight into your Weaving the Faith binder. It could go either behind your recipes tab 
or behind your ordinary time tab.